The Oilers head into a massive measuring stick matchup against the Avalanche tomorrow night. But how is this team different from the last time these two teams faced off? We will talk about that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Your Locked On Oilers, your daily podcast on the Edmonton Oilers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On Oilers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host and former Oilers game day producer, Brett Holden. As mentioned on today's episode, the Edmonton Oilers go into a massive matchup tomorrow night in Colorado as this is a real measuring stick matchup for the Edmonton Oilers in the Mile High State. We will talk about that in just a second, but also on today's episode, a massive 6-1 to one win for the Edmonton Oilers as they draw even closer to that top spot in the Pacific Division. A lot of milestones in that game as well. We will talk about that Sharks game a little later on, and we will wrap up today's episode with the Edmonton Oilers Prospects Report. And this prospect, we're only going to focus on one one prospect as he has become a national champion and a lot more to come his way down the road. All that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Go to HelloFresh.com slash NHL60 to use the code NHL60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Alrighty, let's get into today's episode, starting off with tomorrow night's matchup between the Edmonton Oilers and the Colorado Avalanche. And this matchup between the two teams this year has been nothing but close. They have been both decided after 60 minutes, and the Edmonton Oilers heading into tomorrow's matchup are 0-0-2 against the Colorado Avalanche this season. First time these two teams faced off was January 7th earlier this year, 2023, where the Edmonton Oilers would go on to lose 3-2 in overtime after leading the game 2-0. They blew a 2-0 lead, both goals scored by Zach Hyman, where he would get his 19th and 20th goals of the year. Connor McDavid getting an assist, and Leon Dreisaitl getting two assists on the night. Tyson Berry also getting his 24th assist on the night. And it was Stuart Skinner who would get the overtime loss in this one, but it wasn't without a valiant effort as he went 43 for 46, 43 saves and 46 shots, fired his way. But as mentioned, the story in that game, the three unanswered goals, including the overtime winner by Kale McCarr. We also have to mention the game tying goal scored in the third period, the former Edmonton Oiler, Brad Hunt. Now, this is going to go into a little bit of a tradition, not tradition, a little bit of a cycle for the Edmonton Oilers, a pattern, I guess would be the better word for the Edmonton Oilers in this season series against the Colorado Avalanche. The Edmonton Oilers are have not won in their last six matchups between the Edmonton Oilers and the Colorado Avalanche. It gives you a little bit of, well, that's also dating back to the playoffs last year. So, a lot on the line for the Edmonton Oilers. But, let's go back to the uh, February 19th game against the Colorado Avalanche where the Edmonton Oilers would lose 6-5 to five also in overtime, and here's where the pattern continued. The Edmonton Oilers went up not one, not two, but three nothing in this game, including two goals from Warren Fogle and Leon Dreisaitl's 33rd goal of the year. They would go up 3 nothing, then go up 4-2 after allowing two unanswered goals to make it a one-goal game. Tyson Berry would score his ninth 
from Devin Shore and Yessa Pugliarvi. And then Matthias Janmark would score the Edmonton Oilers' fifth goal of the game, making it a 5-3 hockey game. However, the Edmonton Oilers would lose the game 6-5. to five. So, on January 7th, the last time these two, te- or the first time these two teams played, the Edmonton Oilers blew a 2 nothing lead. In the February 19th game between the Edmonton Oilers and the Colorado Avalanche, the Edmonton Oilers blew a 3 0, 4 2, and a 5 3 lead, allowing three unanswered goals once again to lose the game in overtime, thanks to Miko Rantanen and Jack Campbell getting the loss in that one 36 saves on 42 shots, a 857 save percentage. Now, this Edmonton Oilers team is a much different team than the last time these two teams played. Vinny DeHarnay now has his feet fully wet in the NHL. He wasn't a part of the first two meeting between the Oilers and the uh, Colorado Avalanche. In fact, it was Marcus Niemelainen playing in that game, but was in the second game, or at least was with the team in the second game, but now has become a full-time NHLer. The Edmonton Oilers have acquired Matthias Ekholm and have become one of the best teams in the NHL. And Nick Bukestad has also been added to the Edmonton Oilers' bottom six, already having, well, not already having with the Edmonton Oilers, but having more goals this season, as I constantly bring up, than Jonathan Huberto. But here's something interesting between these two teams. Since the last meeting on February 19th, 2023, the Edmonton Oilers are 18-4-1, 37 points on the year, or since then, and are tied for second in the NHL since February 19th. The team that they are tied with for second in the NHL since February 19th The Colorado Avalanche, who have a record of 18 wins, 5 losses, and 1 loss coming by way of overtime or shootout. 37 points, the only difference between the two teams. The win percentage for the Edmonton Oilers is they have a better win percentage at an 0 or 806. 804, excuse me. The other interesting thing between these two teams is the goals for per 60 minutes. Since February 19th. Colorado Avalanche sits second in or sit first in the NHL, excuse me, in goals for per 60 minutes with 3.54. Second in the NHL, the Edmonton Oilers with 3.51. This not only might be an unbelievable game tomorrow night between the Edmonton Oilers. But it could be an unbelievable rematch from last year's Western Conference Finals. And I have a feeling it might go a different way than people think. Alrighty, let's move on to the game from this weekend between the Edmonton Oilers and the San Jose Sharks. A lot to talk about from that game, including a couple of milestones. So we will talk about that game in just a second. But first, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there is no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars just go to fanduel.com slash locked on sign up place your first bet and get up to one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win so don't miss out on your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join fanduel today just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the Major League Baseball. 
Alrighty, let's take a look back at the weekend game for the Edmonton Oilers as it basically went the way we all thought it would. A 6-1 victory for the Edmonton Oilers over the San Jose Sharks at the Shark Tank. And although it's a big win for the Oilers as they continue to at least breathe down the neck of the Vegas Golden Knights as with this win and the Los Angeles Kings loss... On Saturday against the Colorado Avalanche, the Edmonton Oilers did clinch home ice advantage in the first round of the playoffs. So that is big. But it is more about the individual records that were set last night, or on Saturday, I should say, for the Edmonton Oilers, and specifically the NHL and Connor McDavid with his 150th point on the season two goals one assist three points bringing his total to 151 points with 64 goals and 87 assists Connor McDavid becomes the first player since 1996 since a player named I don't know if you ever heard of Mario Lemieux who did it in 96 to score 150 points That was the year that I was born. This has not happened for 27 years. And we're seeing it right in front of our eyes. I have talked about this consistently over the last, well, season, really, of just what we are seeing in front of us and how special it is. And he continues to put up these unbelievable numbers. With goal number 64, Connor McDavid sits one goal behind Alexander Ovechkin for the most amount of goals scored in the National Hockey League since the 2004-2005 NHL lockout with 65. And he did that in 2008-2009. Which I know it doesn't seem like that long ago, but it was 15 years ago. One goal away from 65. And we still have to see the Edmonton Oilers play the Colorado Avalanche, who he will turn it up for, and the San Jose Sharks again. Now, it wasn't just him who continued on an absolute career year. I mean, he's having a historical career. By the way, Connor McDavid becomes the sixth player in NHL history to score 150 points, joining the likes of Phil Esposito, Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Steve Eiserman, and Bernie Nichols. Let me read that, those names off one more time. And you tell me where they're at in their hockey careers now. And where they stand in their hockey careers now. Phil Esposito. Wayne Gretzky. Mario Lemieux. Steve Eiserman, And Bernie Nichols. Elite company. Let's move on from McDavid, though, as Ryan Nugent Hopkins continued his absolute career year with a goal and two assists on this uh, afternoon on Saturday as he had an unbelievable pass to Derek Ryan as Derek Ryan also scored his... uh, Derek Ryan scored... Which goal was it? It was his 13th goal of the year, excuse me, as he's... Drawing a little bit closer, he's tied for his career high in goals as well. His career high is 15, so two away from that, but is tied for his second most in his career. But Ryan Nugent Hopkins is having, obviously, a career year. 37 goals, 66 assists, 103 points on the season. An unbelievable year for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And Zach Hyman also chipping in with his career year too. 36th goal of the year, also getting his 47th assist as he gets his 83rd point of the season. The numbers are getting more and more impressive. You want more impressive numbers? Alrighty, here you go. Matthias Ekholm, who only chipped in with an assist on the night, was also plus six for the Edmonton Oilers. Now, yes, you can talk about plus minus all you want, but when you score six goals and you're out there for all six, hmm, that's pretty impressive. 
That's pretty impressive. Since joining the Edmonton Oilers 19 games ago, three goals, nine assists, 12 points. He is a plus 25 and averages 20 minutes and 43 seconds a night. He has absolutely solidified the Edmonton Oilers back end, and he really shows why the Oilers are a different team than the last time the Colorado Avalanche has played them. But a completely different team from the trade deadline from a month ago, from wherever you want to use your measuring point. They are a different team. Thanks to Matthias Ekholm. Philip Broberg also getting a goal in this one. Now, this is his second NHL career goal. His first one came April 28th of last season against the San Jose Sharks. Pretty lucky team. I wonder if uh, how he's feeling about the last game of the season on Thursday. Now, Stuart Skinner did uh, it was a uh, not so busy day for him. Not too shocked about that. Twenty two saves on the afternoon on twenty three fired towards him. He is now twenty seven fourteen and three on the year. 12 1 and 1 since March 1st. He is the best or has the best record in the NHL since March 1st. Has a 0.977 save percentage in the NHL since March 29th. He is second to, well, Jack Campbell. Yeah. That's right, Jack Campbell since March 29th and has a 0.67 goals against average on their since uh, also March 29th, excuse me. That is third in the NHL, second or er, to Jack Campbell because the person who is in first is Jet Alexander who has been public enemy number one in Montreal for some reason. But he is that uh, uh, ATO goaltender, the uh, University of Toronto goaltender that did get uh, some time as the emergency backup for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So really... Stuart Skinner and Jack Campbell sit two and one in the NHL since March 29th on save percentage and goals against. Hmm. Hmm. Not too bad, if you ask me. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers, obviously, their next game comes tomorrow against the Colorado Avalanche in Colorado. A big game there. Alrighty, let's wrap up today's episode with a look at the Edmonton Oilers prospect report. As an Edmonton Oiler has just become, well, an Edmonton Oilers prospect has just become a national champion. Now, the next step for him, an NHL contract, but... Will it be with the Edmonton Oilers? We will talk about that in just a second. Alrighty, let's wrap up today's episode with the Edmonton Oilers prospect report. And only one prospect on today's report as the Edmonton Oilers have a national champion in their ranks. And that is none other then Skyler Brindamore. As over the weekend, his Quinnipiac Wildcats went on to win over the Minnesota Golden Gophers in the final, well, Frozen Four, but in the final of the Frozen Four, a 3-2 victory for Quinnipiac. In overtime, it only took 10 seconds for Quinnipiac to clinch the national title. And now we wait for Skylar Brindamore's decision. As Skylar Brindamore has absolutely had a coming out party this season for the Quinnipiac Wildcats or for Quinnipiac this year. As he's in 41 games this year, 14 goals, 18 assists, 32 points, which has been an absolute revelation from the last couple of years. Now, he is a senior now at Quinnipiac, so can't go back to play and is now making the jump to pro. His last three years has looked like this. Last season in 41 games, three goals, 17 assists, 20 points. In 2020-2021, he had 29 games played, 2 goals, 9 assists, 11 points. And in his first year in university hockey or in college hockey, 34 games played, 4 goals, 9 assists, 13 points. Which is a stark contrast when you take a look at his 14, 18, and 32 
this season. He has absolutely flourished this season, so much so that not only are the Edmonton Oilers trying to sign Skylar Brindamore, and yes, the name is exactly the name you think it is. He is Rod's son. But it sounds like there are some teams who are starting to, as Elliot Friedman put it on 32 Thoughts, the vultures are circling on Skylar Brendamore. Now, Skylar Brendamore this season also won the best defensive forward of the year for Quinnipiac and has turned into a real two-way threat for Quinnipiac and as a potential pro Maybe not so in the NHL, but a pro hockey player in his own right right now. Now, in four games in the Frozen Four, he did get one goal against the uh, Ohio State Buckeyes. He also got a block shot in each game. But the interesting thing for Brindamore has been his face-offs, as he won 500 face-offs this season, bumping up from his 399 the year before, so not too bad. And in the Frozen Four, in the biggest tournament of his career so far, he went 11 for 4 in the face-off dot against Merrimack, 14 for 9 against Ohio State, 11 for 11, or excuse me, he went four, uh, 11 and 4, I should say, 11 wins, 4 losses against Merrimack, 14 wins, 9 losses in against Ohio State, 11 wins, 11 losses against Michigan, and 12 wins and 8 losses in the face-off dot against the Minnesota Golden Gophers. He has been a very good player in his own end, very solid player in the face-off dot, winning big face-offs for uh, Quinnipiac, and also has shown he has obviously developed his offensive game. Now, the Edmonton Oilers have until August 15th to sign Skylar Brindamore or else he becomes a free agent. And as mentioned, teams have already said, hey, we're interested if you do become a free agent. So the Edmonton Oilers seem to be interested and want to sign Brindamore. But it's now up to him. The ball is in Brindamore's court. Now, the Edmonton Oilers selected Brindamore in 2017 in the sixth round with the 177th pick. A real flyer. This was a real flyer pick that is now seemingly turning out. He would drastically help, maybe not drastically, but he would help the Bakersfield Condors as the Condors are entering a playoff run here. The Edmonton Oilers only have 45 contracts out of potential 50 that they can have on the books, so there is space for Brindamore. This was also the same draft. His 2017 draft was the same draft as Kyler Yamamoto, Clean Costin, Stuart Skinner, Dmitry Samarukov, and now with the Bakersfield Condors, Phil Kemp, who was also really good uh, buddies, I guess, or kind of came up in the organization with the defenseman that the Oilers traded to the Arizona Coyotes for Nick Bugstad, Michael Kesselring. So... The Edmonton Oilers have had a little bit of success from that 2017 draft. Will Skylar Brindamore be another successful story? We shall see. I shall keep you updated on anything I hear over on my Twitter at the Real Holden 40 and on the Locked On Oilers Twitter as well at Locked On Oilers. Alrighty, let's wrap up today's episode. As mentioned, the Edmonton Oilers face off against the Colorado Avalanche tomorrow night in Colorado. Seven. 30 puck drop in the Mile High City. Is it Mile High City or Mile High, Mile High State? I think I called it Mile High State earlier. I think it's Mile High City. Either way, it, you can't breathe there. And for an asthmatic, it's, it doesn't sound very appealing. Uh, but before we go, thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen today. Now for your next listen, make sure you tune in to Game to Game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you find 
your podcast. A massive game tomorrow night as the Edmonton Oilers have two overtime losses against the Colorado Avalanche. Can they pull one back tomorrow night in Denver? We shall see. Hopefully at the end of that one, we can all play La Bamba, baby.